This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. We're going to talk a little bit about how to do a total shoulder, particularly with respect to patient positioning and surgical approach. We like to use the relaxed beach chair position. It enables us to have the arm free at the edge of the table, giving us full access to the shoulder and access to the airway for the anesthesiologist. Our skin incision is made along a line from the tip of the coracoid to the mid-humerus, avoiding the axilla. We split the interval between the deltoid, which is on the left here, and the pectoralis major, which is on the right. The cephalic vein goes laterally with the deltoid. We separate the deltoid and the pectoralis major. This reveals the incision in the clavipectoral fascia, uh, which is this dotted line here lateral to the coracoid muscles. We put a self-retraining retractor in and that enables us to see the subscapularis here and the anterior circumflex vessels there. There are several different ways that people have taken down the subscapularis. Some people cut through the tendon, which is a tenotomy. Some people do a lesser tuber osteotomy where they take part of the bone off with the tendon. We prefer what's called the peel where we just peel the soft tissues right off the lesser tuberosity because that gives us more safety and more versatility. Often the subscapularis is contracted and so we need to do some releasing of it at the time of surgery to get some increased excursion. So one of the releases we do is release the capsule from the glenoid as shown here. This enables us to gain increased external rotation. We uh, can show this also as a 360 degree release around the tendon, freeing it up from the capsule here and other soft tissues that may be adherent to it. If we need further mobility, we can also release it from the coracoid, which is here, uh, by making an incision as shown here. Now we're looking at the front of the shoulder. We are gonna protect the axillary nerve while we um, proceed with our exposure. The axillary nerve is shown there in yellow. Sometimes it's necessary to release the inferior capsule as shown here. And because we've got the axillary nerve protected, we can do that safely. De depending on how tight the shoulder is, we can affect various degrees of capsular release. If the shoulder is tight all the way around, we can do a 360 degree capsular release all around the glenoid. If the shoulder is loose in the back but tight in the front, we can limit that anterior release, say to five o'clock or so. If it's tight in the back, we can do a posterior capsular release. It's helpful to give the retractor a little twist to put that um, capsule under tension while we cut it. And again, we're protecting the axillary nerve shown there in yellow. We then are able to bring the proximal humerus out into the wound by putting a darrow retractor behind it. This protects the rotator cuff, which is behind this retractor as shown here. Sometimes bone spurs in the back of the humeral head will block our ability to dislocate the shoulder. So we can use a retractor, a smooth retractor like the one I showed previously as a shoehorn to help us spin the humerus into the uh, joint and expose it that way. Thank you.